Hey, Bass Geek here, and today we're doing a keeper call on the Helix Gen 2 Mega Chirp. So today's keeper call is going to be just a little bit different. It's not should you buy it, but it's should you upgrade from the Gen 1 to the Gen 2. I'm going to give you the pros and cons. I even upgraded an inch uh, to the 10. So I'll tell you really what the difference between the 9s and the 10s are. Okay, so let me give you my overall first impressions uh, and let me tell you, you know, the things that uh, I really enjoyed about the nines. Guys, I used this particular unit right here last year to find and catch a ton of bass. You can go back and look at the videos. I mean, guys, I, I used this unit right here to catch a lot of fish. Uh, along with the front unit during the wintertime, it was really... Uh, great as far as you know the Domeki rig the 2D and getting out there use this to find them on 2 on 2D too out there uh, during the winter time so so last year I caught a lot of fish using the gen ones so can you find fish with the gen ones yes can you find fish and catch fish on the gen ones can you find structure on the Gen 1s? Absolutely. They do a great job. You can go back and check out my Keeper Call where I go into great detail about this particular unit. Today is really just going to be a comparison of the two units. You know, we're not going to get real in depth about this. We're going to talk about where they differ. So let's talk about the basic features. Uh, because, you know, most of us aren't going to dive in. We're not going to be using all this crazy crap that, you know, a lot of these units put in here. I mean, we're just not. You know, as a matter of fact, if you go back and you look at my uh, unit one, my settings from last year, you know, that I shared with you, you'll see I really try to uh, cull down the amount of settings so that, uh, you know, I've only got a few screens that I use, a few setups that I use, and that's sort of what I'm doing to make me more efficient. So the things that I really, really need for maybe a particular body of water or a particular time of year, I may make adjustments. But again, go back and watch that video. There is a settings video coming later on about the Gen 2. But right now, we're going to really talk about the comparisons. Now, I've got a 10. We'll, we'll compare a 9 to a 9. The initial big deal that everybody talks about is the Mega. So, what is Mega? So, Mega basically is the frequency that you can use. So, it moves it from the kilohertz to the megahertz range. So, on the gen 2 unit you actually use a 1200 so the 9 for the 2d uses an 83 200 kilohertz for the down and side imaging it uses a 455 and an 800 kilohertz now the mega is one step above that and what it is is it moves up into the kilohertz range or the megahertz range, I'm sorry, and that is a 1.2 megahertz. Uh, so what that's going to do is it's going to give you greater detail, uh, but it also doesn't penetrate the water as well at that single frequency. Now here's the other difference, and guys, here's the big difference to me. Here's the standout difference, and it's the chirp. And what chirp is, to put it in kind of layman's terms, is it's kind of a broad band. So it's not a single frequency. So it's like basically taking a fine point paintbrush and trying to paint a wall. That's what traditional units did without chirp. Chirp actually takes, instead of 455, 
it actually takes 420 all the way through 520. So that's 100 frequencies in that range. So using Chirp on the Gen 2s, the 800 frequency actually runs at 790 to 850, and the Mega actually runs from 1150 to 1275. So another feature that I was super excited about on the Gen 2s was the ability to use separate frequencies for down and side imaging, which you can see in this screenshot. So it's like taking a roller to the wall or several rollers to the wall. So it paints a much better detailed picture based on the chirp alone. Even the 420 today I was using, or the 455 range, I was using that today uh, scanning some deep channels and I had my uh, side imaging set at about 85 feet. Now most of the time on the old units <clears throat> when you are scanning uh, on side imaging if you're using 455 or if you're using you know the 800 you you have a lot of signal loss when you know as one side drops down and as one side comes up it begins to blow out and get really you know, bright and almost unreadable. The good thing about chirp, especially when you're using those wider frequencies, and, and I was finding fish on it, is it, it kind of balances that out, it smooths that out. You have a much wider range, so you have a much better picture of the bottom. Uh, because, you know, rocks and sand and leaves and brush and fish, even different types of fish, will reflect different signals different ways and so what this does is it actually has a very broad band of signals so where these uses use single frequencies like 83 or 200 455 or 800 the chirp really enables these to use a broad a, a broad band of frequencies and that to me has been the big improvement on the Humminbird Helix unit. The third real difference, and for me, this was a big one. I especially noticed this when I was fishing Domeki stuff and trying to find those Domeki fish out deep last year. Smallmouth are gonna have a, a, a lighter return than a largemouth will. And guys, I would go over fish with my down imaging last year on the Gen 1 uh, out super deep, and I wouldn't see them. Now that could be cone size, uh, but I was running my 2D sonar, and my 2D sonar would pick those fish up much better than the Gen 1 um, down imaging. And from what I understand, now don't hold me to this, I've tried to research this, but Humminbird is not, or at least until now, has not been a true down imaging. It's been a uh, computer interpretation of the 2D sonar and the side imaging. For me, that's a problem because sometimes the computer might look at it and say, well, that's nothing, leave it out. And I, and I honestly think it did that several times. Now again, I didn't test it, it could be cone, it could be the cone size of the difference between the 2D and the down imaging. But guys, I ran right over fish, like I had them marked and I literally could not see them on my down imaging. And I've been in the boat with my buddy Tim, and he's got the Lowrance units, the 12s, uh, Gen 3s, um, HDS, and I'll tell you right now, they are much better down imaging than the Gen 1s, uh, Humminbird Helix units. Now, all that being said, here's the difference. These now have true at least the mega units now have true down imaging. So it's no more interpretation. 
they show what's actually there. And I'll tell you what, even today, I'm seeing things on this lake that I've never seen. I'm seeing fish in places and doing things on this lake that I've never seen. I'm actually able to piece together some some puzzles, some things that I was really unsure of about what these fish do and where they move on this lake. And this unit, because of that, has really helped me kind of put that together just today, as a matter of fact. Unfortunately, we didn't catch any of them, but man, we sure did find out where they were hiding. Like I said, as far as everything else, as far as the features go, we'll talk more about that in the settings. What this is, is really a comparison of units. Um, so now let's talk, because I get a lot of questions between the 9 and the 10. You know, should I upgrade? What's the difference? Is the $300 worth it? Well, I'm going to tell you this. Basically, the only difference, guys, the only difference between a 9 and a 10 is resolution and the screen is one inch bigger. Does the resolution matter? Well, it helps. I'm not going to lie. I mean, it, it helps. Is it $300 worth of difference? Again, we'll, we'll talk about that at the end. They literally come, there is no difference in the design. All the buttons are the same. All the buttons function exactly the same. They are exactly the same. They are identical. As a matter of fact, they come in the same box. Not the packaging box. This unit is the same box as this unit. The brackets are interchangeable. The plugs are interchangeable. You know, I didn't even have to remove the bracket from my nine from here. I just slid this one right in. There's no difference. The only difference in screen size is this little black bezel, this little black box around the screen. On the nine, it's an inch bigger. On the 10, it's an inch smaller. They are identical. So is it a keeper coal upgrading from the Gen 1 to the Gen 2? In my opinion, if you have the money, absolutely. Guys, on the Gen 1, I've showed it last year, you're going to find fish, you're going to catch fish. There's nothing whatsoever wrong with this unit. Nothing. It works great. I love this unit. But guys, I've never seen anything like this unit right here. The, the Mega Chirp with the third crystal that they put in for down imaging, with the Chirp, I'm telling you, without the Chirp, the Mega, not that big of a deal. It's going to be pretty useless. It's going to be a shallow water thing only. And don't get me wrong, guys, that would change the shallow water game. And it's already changed my shallow water game. I'm finding fish, even on this bank right here, on these steep bluffs, I can tweak this out to where it doesn't blow out. And I'm finding bluegill beds in five foot of water, you know, 50 feet out to my side. I'm finding fish 50 feet out to my side on a 45 degree bank, guys. This is awesome but the chirp puts it over the top the chirp is amazing because you're painting a picture with a wide brush you know it's not a one tiny little stroke it is boom and the picture is complete and it's sharp and it's more well defined than it has ever been hit the chirp alone allows you to be able to not button push near as much, to not up and down and tweak out things and change frequencies. It is as close to set and forget as these units can get right now with the technology they have. Uh, it's amazing, guys. It's amazing. Again, I found fish today in places on this tin that really filled a hole in my deep water game that you know i didn't understand where these fish would go i didn't understand what they were doing and i found places and things today on my you know gen 2 that just 
have opened my eyes and, and showed me things that I never thought I'd see. The separation in trees. You know, I took Chris out. We, we, did, a, uh, we did a little bit of scouting on uh, Top Secret Lake F, which I hope you guys are going to get to see more of. And we found a huge school in a laydown. And Chris threw a big worm in there and boom, whacked one of them. It was great. The separation from the limbs and the fish were, I mean, it, it's amazing. It's amazing the things you're going to see that you've never seen and the detail you're going to see them in. So if you have the money, yes, go ahead by all means. Absolutely don't think twice about it. I'm telling you, upgrade to a Gen 2. Remember, if it needs to be networked, G2N. Okay, now, from the 9 to the 10, that's a $300 difference. From a Gen 2 10 to a, or from a Gen 2 9 to a Gen 2 10. Is it worth the money? I'm going to say no. Are you going to see things bigger? Is it going to be a little bigger screen? Guys, my opinion, if you're going to upgrade, if you're having problems seeing, the 10's not going to help you. Uh, yes, is it more pixels? Yes, is it a clear screen? Yes, but, I mean, we can talk about stats all day. Set them side by side. Go into Bass Pro Shops. They got both of them sitting right there. Even on demo mode, look at them. I mean, I know that's a perfect setup, but it's not that much difference. And it's not going to be that much difference in the real world either. So I hope this helps you decide what you're going to do. Make sure that you ask me any questions. I'll answer anything that I may be left out in this video, even about other units. You know, uh... I've answered so many questions about Lawrence. Now, I don't know really anything about Garmin's, or, but Lawrence and, you know, Hummingbirds, I'm really familiar with. So, you know, ask me any question. If I don't have the answer, I'll absolutely research it for you and get you the answer. But, you know, my 10 is a keeper. I'm super happy I went with it. Uh, and I hope by me purchasing it, it'll help you guys out. We'll do the settings video here probably in about a month from now. I gotta get some, gotta get some good picks for you guys on some of this stuff that we're talking about. And, you know, as always, questions and comments in the comment section below. Uh, you know I love to talk about fishing with you guys. I love to talk about fishing with each and every one of you. Please make sure you leave a comment down below and let's talk about uh, these units or other units or uh, just find them out deep using the sonar. Like it if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you ring my bell for the notifications and you guys rock.